right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Jesus. All right, all right. Settle. Settle, we're gonna build. We're gonna build. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Look at this. Not bad. All right, all right, okay. Thank you, thank you. Jesus Christ. Give out some free tickets. Everybody shows up, huh? He's like, this guy fucking rocks, man! Free tickets! I like this guy. All right, well, it's, uh, it's good to be here, man. It's nice to be back in town here in New York. I didn't do shit today. I didn't lose it, man. I just sat around watching TV and all that type of stuff. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. You know what? I'm sick of pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, sex offenders. Dude, they're on every channel. Everybody is doing something on sex offenders. You know, it's like, dude, I got it. There's people out there touching kids, you know? But it's not everybody. It's a very small portion of the population. So, you know, take it down a few because you're making it fucking awkward out there. Dude, you can't say hi to kids anymore. I love kids. I love kids. I like making faces at them on the airplane, making them laugh. Now parents are like, is that a sex offender? They start huddling their kids in, making me feel like a freak, you know? I'm terrified of kids now. Remember back in the day when a kid would come walking up to you, you, you could pat him on the head, hey, hey, Rusty, how you doing, right? Now a kid comes walking up, and I'm like, dude, get that thing the fuck away from me. Get it away from me. I'm serious, dude, get it away from me. Hands are up high, not aroused, just terrified, please, for the love of God. I'm serious, get that thing away from me, all right? Don't need the FBI or have to catch a predator guy to come walking out, like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? No, 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 sit down. That show to catch a predator, man, that is horrible PR for white people, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can they move that show to an urban area every once in a while? Just catch a couple of R. Kelly's peeing on some kids, you know? <laughs> Just balance it out a little bit. It's like, does every dude walking in that house gotta look like me? Like, hey, man, a fucking egg you roll, how are you? <laughs> no, but it's unbelievable. Everybody is talking about pedophiles and all that type of stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe there's more of them nowadays. Is it, is it like easier now? Because the internet, you know? You know, because back in the day you had to work for it, right? You know, you had to get an ice cream truck, you had to buy some budget You had to figure out when the kids got out of school, you pick a straggler, you know? Now you just go on the internet, you just Google www.eight-year-old whose parents are falling asleep. You know, you're in there. No, it's unreal. When was the last time you saw a kid riding a bicycle down the street? You're never gonna see that shit again. You never see him playing outside. The parents just have him inside now, man. They're just feeding him and feeding him, you know? Just making him fatter and fatter. I'm trying to make him unfuckable. That's what it is. That's why you see all these 450 pound eight year olds just come, just come waddling out of the house. You can't get that kid in the car. I'm serious, pedophiles in general are very skinny people. They gotta start chalking up their forearms and fucking blowing out their back. <laughs> it's just a theory, people. Seriously. Honestly. Don't take this shit too seriously. Does he really think that? Does he think that that's why there's... I don't know. I rented that movie, uh, Pride, recently. Have you guys seen that movie? Anybody see that? It's about the first all-black swim team and the difficulties they had to go through being the first all-black swim team. Let me ask you a question. How many of those white people are evil movies are they gonna make? <laughs> it's like, it's all the way down to swimming. <laughs> you know? I'm starting to run out of white guilt, you know? No, it's like those movies, they started off unbelievable. Started off with Roots, right? White guilt was at an all-time high. I could barely even watch it. I'm like, dude, I got it. My ancestors are evil, okay? Please, please turn the channel, dude. Please turn the channel. They still hitting them? Fuck, turn the channel. This is gonna be on all week? Jesus Christ, turn the channel. Then in the 80s, there was like a football movie. Then like Cuba Gooding wanted to be like a scuba diver. Remember that shit? And now, it's all the way down to swimming. And I gotta admit, I don't think I give a fuck. You know? 
I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's a recreational activity. <laughs> Plus, I've been in pools. There's been black people in the pool, you know? I never saw any white guy, like, trying to, like, fucking, like, prevent people <laughs> from getting into the pool. <laughs> it's like, they're just, like, making this shit up. I'm not, I'm not being a dick here either, okay? Just to clarify, you know, I just don't want anybody coming up to me after the show like, you know, I was thinking it, and then you fucking said it, and then... I'm not saying that I don't think black shit people should be allowed to put on some Speedos and go for a dip. I'm not saying that shit. I'm just saying... These movies, like, the characters aren't even believable. Like, they always have to have, like, that, the, the over-the-top, uninhibited white racist character, you know? You know that guy? He's a guy, like, uh, he's supposed to represent all the white evil, you know? He's like the dude they always have, like, screaming during the movie trailer. They'd be like, they were the first all-black swim team. Get out of the pool! <laughs> he's got, like, a big vein in his forehead. He's just screaming shit, look, not even looking around, you know? Dude, it's ridiculous. Real racism is quiet. It's subtle. People look around first. Make sure the, you know, they make sure the coast is clear. There's disclaimers, like, dude, you know I'm not racist, but uh, these insert group name followed by fucked up conversation, right? That's how it goes down. It's not just some guy just standing up there. There's Negroes in the pool. Do you approve of this? I work at the bank. Can I be fired immediately, please? I'm just saying, can you just make the shit, like, believable? You know what the honest thing is? Those movies, they're starting to give me a complex. You know, because anytime they do a movie about a group of people that thinks dumb shit about another group of people, it's always like white dudes. So it's like, are white dudes the only ones who think ignorant shit about other people, you know? No Mexican guy ever walked up to somebody from India like, dude, what the fuck is that? Is that like itchy? Is that bug you? What is it? White dudes the only ones walking around. Why, you guys don't eat cows? What are you, a bunch of fags? Well, then why are you wearing sandals? This guy's wearing sandals. This guy's a fag. Just saying, you know, just balance the movies out a little bit. Like, just have some of the evil shit that black people say about white people, you know, when, when we're not around, you know? Like, like, well, what are some good examples, you know? You know, like, you know what I mean? You're hanging out, you had a rough day, you know? What are some of the classics? You know, what smell like wet dogs, right? You got headlights or something like that, right? Just, just slip some of that shit in there. Get out of the pool! Wash your hair, motherfucker, Brian. Just make it seem a little more... Dude, I'm just saying, it's all the way down to swimming. I mean, where the fuck do you go from there? We do, like, ping pong? They were the first all-black ping pong team. They're gonna steal the paddles. Denzel Washington. <laughs> my daughter's not playing ping pong! You got to go out there and show the white man your bed, ping pong. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying, uh... I don't know, it's always just weird bringing this shit up, but... No, I'm not saying white people aren't evil, either. Because I, I know we're evil. I got that evil in me. I do, I can, so I can feel it. That's why I try to suppress it. I try to dress casual, you know what I mean? I'm serious, man. I tried a suit on the other day. I felt it coming up. Like, fuck, man. I want to take over some shit, right? <laughs> I want to start telling people what to do. I want to go pollute a lake, blame it on my secretary, you know? <laughs> Dude, I don't even like those movies when they make black and white people get along, man. Even those ones seem ridiculous, you know? Because there always has to be, like, some sort of lesson in those movies. Just like, you know, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> and it's like, that never happens, you know? Anytime I've ever hung out with a black dude, at no point during the evening has he, like, tried to, like, teach me how to dance, you know? You know that interracial footloose moment they always have to have in those movies? And I never go to his neighborhood and, like, try to, like, save a school, you know? How many times are they gonna make that movie? You know that movie? The white person goes into the projects. They just have to make a difference. You know, they just made that movie again with, uh, what was it, Hilary Swank? It's like, did you even need to go see it? It's like, let me guess. She shows up, and they don't accept her, right? <laughs> and she goes home, she cries to her effeminate boyfriend who's wearing sweatpants, and he's cooking something for some reason, right? 
and he convinces her, he convinces her to give it one more chance, right? So then she goes back down there, she starts drawing out their inner beauty. Next thing you know, they put a do-rag on her, she starts fucking dancing. And it's just embarrassing for all races involved. For the love of God, stop making that fucking movie. Dude, the amount of times they made that movie, I would think I would know somebody white who actually did that shit, you know? Just be like, ah, it's Mike, yeah, he saves ghettos. That's what he does, you know? I sit around, I watch Sports Center, you know, he's in the projects every weekend. Just writing his name on the blackboard. My name's Mr. Michael. All right, who threw that? Who threw that? It's just annoying after a while, you know? And it always fucking works out, too. Anytime the white person goes down there, I want to make that, I want to see a movie where it doesn't work out. Like the white dude goes down there the first day, just gets the shit kicked out of him, you know? <laughs> just leaving all negative. You can't fucking help these people, you know? You go down there, you try to do something nice. I couldn't get a goddamn word in. It's a three and all prescription. <laughs> so here's something I saw the other day I've not seen in a long time. You know what I saw? I saw balls on a dog. <laughs> hey, remember that shit? Dude, I have not seen that since like the late 90s. I was literally sitting there looking like, I remember that shit. Dogs used to have balls. I remember that. I bet you. Hit your friend, eh, hey, look at his balls, you know, and everybody would laugh. <laughs> no, but somewhere along the line, it became socially acceptable to cut your dog's balls off, whether there's anything wrong with them or not, under the whole fear of like, well, if we don't do it, he's gonna fuck another dog, they're gonna make more dogs, and what are we gonna do with all these dogs? <laughs> they're not gonna have homes? Well, what are we gonna do? I love that shit. What are we gonna do? It's like, dude, they're animals. Just let them go. They'll be fine. They got fangs, they got claws, they'll form packs, you know? They'll help with the obesity problem in this country, you know? You come stumbling out of a cheesecake factory, just like a herd of fucking Rottweiler running at you. You gotta run to your SUV, dive in Dukes of Hazard style, right? No, I'm pro dog balls. I am. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Dog should be able to, you know, fuck who he wants to and... <laughs> it's ridiculous. No, I want to get a dog. I want to get a dog. I've been dying to get a dog. And immediately, my girls immediately, well, we have to get it from getting a dog, we have to get him fixed. I'm like, why do we have to get him fixed? Well, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. I don't... And I'm like, well, you're not a veterinarian. She's like, well, neither are you. Great, then it's a stalemate. Neither one of us knows what the fuck we're talking about, so let's not start cutting anything off the animal, right? <laughs> so, of course, if she's a female, she's got to go out and prove me wrong. Goes out and gets a book. Okay, look at this. See, it says right here, um, you get your dog fixed. He's less likely to be aggressive. Hmm? Okay? Okay? No. No, listen. God, you're such an asshole. Just listen. <laughs> and then it says, he's less likely to rip up the furniture. Yeah, huh? Is that thing, you know? I was just like, sweetheart, when we were a kid, we had a family dog, all right? He had his balls. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, occasionally he humped your leg, you know? But generally speaking, he just laid around, he begged for food, you came home, he was excited, but he wasn't wearing a raincoat, like, jerking off or something, you know? <laughs> he lived... He lived for 15 years without incident with his balls, you know? No sexual harassment, nothing. <laughs> No, I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's weird how, like, human beings are trying to control the population of animals, you know? Like, any time the deer population gets out of control, some dude would literally get on TV and be like, all right, the deer population is up to about 17, 1800. Realistically, we need to get that number down to about five, six of them, all right? <laughs> so start them off, you got a gun, fucking shoot one in the face! <laughs> I'm just sitting at home like, what are the deer doing that's so bad for the environment, you know? They're gonna eat all the fucking grass. They're coming up to trees, just nibbling. Just nibbling. Dude, the deer didn't put a hole in the ozone layer, all right? That's not a bunch of dogs clogging up the freeways. It's us, right? We can fuck all we want. No one's gonna stop you. Could have, you could have 15 kids, have a 16th on the way. No one's gonna get on TV and be like, all right, Paul is still fucking. <laughs> Start them off, you got a gun, fucking shoot him in the face. Do what you gotta do, this guy, he's out of control. That was great. 
It's great, man. You can just keep banging away. You can just keep banging away, making one useless, mediocre, not gonna invent shit kid after another. <laughs> no, I don't understand people like that. Say, so don't you realize after your third loser kid, you don't have the DNA to make somebody special? It's like, what are you doing? All you're doing, you're just making more in the way people just walking around, looking up at shit as you're trying to get down the sidewalk, you know? Well, you know that dude, whenever you go into the deli, there's always that guy in front of you who doesn't know what he wants. Oh, what, kind of, what kind of bread is that? It's like, dude, stop making that fucking guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that dude, that dude is everywhere. <laughs> no, that's why I love old people. I love old people. They always with their family photos. Cracks me up. You know, like, well, they're all proud, like, well, we had five kids, and then they all had five, and da-da, da-da. <laughs> it's like, yeah, none of you did shit. <laughs> I don't recognize anybody in that photo. You just made 30 people who are all taking a shit every day that ends up in a river. <laughs> That's not a family photo. That's an environmental disaster, and you framed it. <laughs> no, that's my solution for global warming. Everybody's talking about cars and oil. That doesn't matter. It's just too many people, you know. It's too many people doing it. It's just, you know, you want to help the environment, just stop fucking. <laughs> right? I'm not saying stop fucking, but, you know, pull out. <laughs> you can still have your fun, right? But you got to stop looking at babies like they're these cute things, all right? They're not. They are, they are cute, but most of them are just going to grow up. They're just going to end up being another shithead in like an SUV that doesn't pull out far enough into the intersection, right? <laughs> Now you gotta wait a whole nother light to make a left, and you're just sitting there losing your shit, screaming at your windshield with this dude who didn't need to exist. It's like, there's no reason for that guy. We got that guy. I don't know. That's my plan. They should just make babies illegal for like the next like 25, 30 years, right? That'd be great. Think about it. somebody's born, three people are born every second to one person dying, right? So if you're not making anybody, it's like, bam, somebody just died, right? Somebody just fell down some stairs. Somebody just tripped over a skateboard, right? And you know what? Fucking lanes just opening up on the highway, right? You know, you get to work a little sooner. You're in a better mood. Dude, you get it down to like 30,000 people. 30,000 people will be the shit. Right? Super Bowl comes around, everybody can go. Right? Everybody can go. 22 of you get to play. The odds of you making it in the NFL, it's ridiculous. Dude, even if you suck, you could still you could block on punts. You'd be like a wedge breaker, or maybe be that guy holding the first down marker, like, yeah, I'm fucking doing something. You wouldn't have to recycle. Dude, if there was 30,000 people, man, everybody here, you could literally drive your own tank. You could drive a tank, you could throw toxic waste out the top. You could shoot a bald eagle right in the head. Nah, there's plenty of them. Plenty of them. Dude, they're shitting all over my tank. What the fuck am I supposed to do? <laughs> Look, people, I don't read, okay? Seriously, none of my shit is researched, you know? But out of all the bullshit I'm talking up here, I think I'm onto something with this, you know? <laughs> it's like I'm eliminating people, but like no one has to die. <laughs> That's it, just stop making... Dude, we're gonna end up like China. They got like over a billion people, just, just jam-packed. Every day is like the subway. People just standing there, you can't even fall asleep. Like, oh shit, sorry about that. <laughs> just jam-packed. You never think about that shit? Just standing there, we're gonna be sitting there. First of all, how easy is it to get away with the crime over in China, you know? First of all, you pick somebody's pocket, you don't, you don't have to run away. You just fucking weave your way back into the crowd, just fucking stand over here. <laughs> Guy standing like, dude, somebody just took my wallet! Dude, he's right over there! He's right over, he's right there! Dude, he's got black hair, he's five foot five, he's dressed like he's in Reservoir Dogs. He's right over there! No, that's where we're going to be headed. How many more strip malls can you make? Places to get donuts and people to... 
get their nails done. Everybody's all excited. This, this area is really, it's really exploding. It's really exploding. It's like, no, dude, people are fucking, and then they're just building more shit. I don't know. I gotta get my act together, man. I'm really, uh, I'm really at a critical point in my life, you know? I am. I'm, I'm serious. I'm a, I'm a fucking psycho, man. I, I've realized this about myself. Like, you know, I'm not married, you know? And I'm really getting to that critical age where, you know, pretty soon I'm just, you know, I gotta pick a street. <laughs> Either I'm gonna get married, you know, or I'm just gonna be in that creepy old guy hanging out in a bar, you know, red chest hair hanging out. <laughs> No, seriously, I don't know what's, uh, what's wrong with me. I just, uh, I, th I think I, I just stayed single too long, man. It's just brutal. This is a critical point when you stay single too long than when your brain switches from, uh, you know, like, you know, don't, don't, don't say that to her. Eh, fuck it, say it. See what happens. <laughs> Dude, and once you cross that line, this, 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 the evil that just, just opens up, it's just, you know... I don't know, you know what, I just find women that just like, uh, I think they're great. I don't want this to come off like, I don't want to come off here like I'm some woman hater, because, you know, I know I'm a psycho, but it's just like, I don't know, I just find them to be like relentless. Just every day, they, they just, they just got to come at you. They just wake up, they have an agenda, and so they're like these psycho robots that never run out of batteries, and every day they just keep fucking, just keep coming at you, right? You got to deal with that every single day. Hey, honey, you want to And you literally, you know? Every day, it's, it's like waves hitting the beach, you know? Every day, just eroding a little more of your life away, you know? Just waking up inch by inch, you know? Every day, just... Why are you hanging out with him? He drinks too much. Where'd you buy that? That's ugly. Throw it out! So one day, you're just hanging out in the middle of a lagoon, just floating there with your baseball cards. You're waving to your friends back on the shore. Don't get me tickets. I still like sports. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Hey, honey, how you doing? <laughs> no, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn how to how to pick my battles with my girl. You know, it's what I am. You know, I used to argue all the time. I'm just trying to pick the battles. Some days they they come at you. You just, you just gotta let them go. You just let them go and follow them to whatever dumb shit they want to do. Like, hey, it's gonna be the picnic. We'll have a picnic. You bring the good bank and you fucking... <laughs> then other days, you just, you just gotta get your hand up. You just gotta... Just create this perimeter or something for them to bounce off. Like... Bang, and you, just, and you just send that psycho energy in another direction. <laughs> Buy yourself a couple of hours for freedom before they bounce off something else. Bang, and they start coming back in. Go see my parents. No, they're relentless, they never stop, and there's no reason for them to stop. You know why? Because you can't hit them. That's what it is. Think about that. There's no physical ramifications for being an asshole when you're a woman. Do you know how much of a, how much of a dick I would be if it was socially unacceptable to kick the shit out of me? Dude, I would be trashing everybody I saw. See some big muscle bomb guy, hey, go to the fucking gym. Slap his protein shake out and say, hey, go fuck yourself, right? But I can't do that, right? Every guy has a line, and if I cross the line, I get blasted in the face. Totally acceptable, right? But with women, there's no line. They can just keep fucking, just keep coming at you. Dude, they can do stuff worthy of like a suplex, and they'll just stand right next to it. They don't even have the decency to run away. They, like light your clothes on fire. They're like, ta-da, I did that shit. <laughs> oh yeah. And I was so proud of my work, I stuck around to see your reaction. I invited a couple of friends to heckle you as you try to stomp it out with your bare feet. Oh yeah, they'll like key your car, sign their name, Susan did this shit. And you're sitting like, now can I at least put her in a headlock, give her a couple of... Now, I feel bad for women that you, you never get to feel that. You guys should, should do it to each other, you know? Just every once in a while. Just haul off and just blast one of your friends in the face, you know? It's good for you. <laughs> no, I know, yeah, I know, it hurts. You know, you can't feel your nose, your ears are ringing, but I'm telling you, man, it, it clears your head. And it causes you to, like, evaluate yourself. 
I swear to God, any time I ever got punched in the face, I was always pissed. But at some point during the drive home, I'd always be thinking like, you know, I was kind of being a dick back there, you know? <laughs> and I really think about it, I probably shouldn't have said that last shit, you know? And you, you, you'd like make that adjustment. <laughs> this guy's an asshole. I can't believe he's just gonna say this kind of thing. Actually, my girl punched me in the head on Valentine's Day a few years ago. Yeah, you want to hear this story? This is a great one. This is how much of a dick I am, that I can actually tell a girl I love her, give her a card, and somehow, at the end of the night, she's still blasting me in the head, you know? <laughs> I can't even remember what happened. All I know is she said some shit, then I said some stuff, then she said some more stuff, and I said, fuck it, I'm going for big air. I said the last shit, and next thing you know, she just came flying at me, right? Fist balled up. Okay, and at first she was just hitting me all in here, you know, which is acceptable, right? It's a holiday, let's fucking keep it nice, you know? Let's keep it nice, right? And I gotta admit, I was blocking most of it at first, right? I was doing the rope-a-dope, I was leaning back, I was pulling her head in, I was leaning on her, talking shit, trying to tire her out, right? And then all of a sudden she just went up top, fucking wham, it hit me right in the side of the head. You know what hurt the most was not that she hit me, was that after she hit me, she didn't have the decency to hop back like, like maybe something was gonna happen. She knew nothing was gonna happen. It's against the rules. So not only did she get to blast me in the head, she then got to do like this UFC talking shit thing in my face, just pointing. Oh, it was brutal. Then she started like breaking up some stuff. You know, of course it was all my stuff and I'm just standing there, okay, don't look her in the eye, stand as still as you can. Let her calm down. Oh, that's great. That's something mine from high school. That meant a lot to me. <laughs> evidently not to you. It's funny. If I was doing that shit, I'd have a cop with his knee in my back, but evidently you have a vagina, so that makes it okay. I just have to stand here as you break all my shit. I don't know. It's, it's got to be me. It does. You know? I get into too many arguments. I do, I got in an argument with this girl the other day. You ever meet somebody, like, within the first couple of minutes of meeting them, they, they feel like they can, like, sum you up? Just like, you know what your problem is? <laughs> and you just have this unbelievable urge just to take their head and just mush it into whatever they're eating, you know? And really hold it there for a second, you know? Like, feel the panic in the back of their head as, like, the air bubbles become, like, less and less frequent, you know? <laughs> you ever have, like, weird thoughts like that? Like, random violent thoughts, you know? Like, I actually had the urge to elbow an old lady in the face the other day. <laughs> no, it's unreal. I swear to God, man, I, I, was going, I was going to get off a plane, right? You know the rules, when you go to get off the plane, it goes row by row by row, right? And this lady's all like, ooh, I'm 90, I get to cut everybody, right? So she starts waddling around me, you know? I'm competitive, I start boxing her up, right? <laughs> so I pick up my luggage, I swear to God, I did this. I'm literally taking up the whole aisle. And all of a sudden, wow, I just go around him. She just starts waddling all around me, and then I just feel my elbow. Like, dude, you're gonna take this shit, man? Come on. <laughs> dude, you got a wide open shot, you know? Just give her a quick one. She's not even gonna feel it. She's gonna go down, then you can play it off. Like, oh, is she with you? Is that happening? <laughs> but I didn't do it, man. I got, I got my body under control. Like, come on, man, we can't do this shit. This is wrong. And I thought I was in control, and then she got, like, right about there. Then I felt her, my, like, my foot going, dude, we can still trip her. We can still trip her, man. <laughs> Just throwing that out there? <laughs> All the time, I do. I didn't do it. <laughs> Somebody just went, oh, I didn't, I didn't, it just... You never think shit like that? You never just walk down the street, see somebody up on a ladder, you just wanna go over and just, <laughs> just shaking it? Just to do it? You see people like eating, you know, sidewalk cafe, eh, having a good time, like, eh. <laughs> Knock all that shit off. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It was just, it was one of, one of those moments. This girl was annoying me. She was eating something, and I was envisioning plunging her face right into it. All right, this is basically what happened, okay? She tried to say I was homophobic. I think she's full of shit, and this is the story, all right? We were in a diner, right? We just got done eating, okay, it came out, I was looking down at the ground, and when I looked up, there was like these two dudes, like, hardcore making out, you know? And it's like, I wasn't fucking ready. You know what I mean? I, so it was all it was, I wasn't ready. It's like, you know, if you rent a Brokeback Mountain, or I'm walking through the village, I can get my brain prepared for what I might see, but it's like, I wasn't fucking ready, you know? I'm, I just eating these fries, my God, you dumb shit, you gotta go to the gym, you know? It's in my own head. 
And when I looked up, these two dudes, one guy had a beard, there's ah, just going at it. So the second I looked up, I just went like, ugh. I just looked away. That's all I did, real quick. Just, ugh. And I just. And then this girl was just glaring at me, like, oh my god, what's, what's that all about? What's that? Were you like homophobic? Are you homophobic? I go, no, I'm not homophobic. I got no hatred, you know. I got no hatred in, in that area. She goes, well, what was that all about? I go, I, I don't, it, was, it was just like a visual thing. It was just, you know. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, well, put it this way. The first time I ever saw a porno, I was like 14 years old. I had no idea what doggy style was, but the second I saw it, my brain was just like, that is the shit. I want to fucking do that. At some point in my life, I want to convince a woman to do that with me, right? My brain was like, yes, my dick was up. Everything was in agreement that this was a wonderful thing, and I had no idea what it was. But in the same token, if at any point during that porno, if somebody started like kissing somebody's feet or like sucking on their toes, it was, just, it was just gross to me. But that doesn't mean I hate feet and I don't want them in my neighborhood. That just means I'm not into that shit. It's the same thing with the gay dudes. I have no hatred in my heart for gay people, all right? They're cool, they're funny, generally speaking, they're neat, you know? I got a lot of positive things to say about them, you know? They move to your neighborhood, the property value goes up because they make it fabulous, right? They can't reproduce, so they're not making more in-the-way people walking around looking up at shit. Yeah. They're wonderful for the environment. God bless them. But how far does political correctness go that I got to look at some shit that's making my brain go like, ah, fucking look away, right? I'm supposed to override that, start, like, cheering on the relationship, like, woo, grab his ass! your fingers through his chest hair. <laughs> Dude, it's ridiculous. You're gonna tell me some gay guy never walked down the street, seen two straight, pe straight people just going at it, and never just thought like, oh God, why would you? I just mm. <laughs> had to like walk it off. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> he can't help it. That's just how his brain is wired, right? He's just like pussy, Ugh. and I'm like dick, Ugh. right? <laughs> but there's no hatred in that. I can't, I don't know, I just couldn't fucking explain it to this girl. She's like, yeah, I think you're homophobic. It's like, no, I'm, it's, it was on the same level. You ever see a big guy eating a sandwich, right? And he gets a little mustard on the side of his face, right? You fucking look away. But that doesn't mean you want him to choke on the sandwich and you want to get a bunch of friends to beat the shit out of him for eating the sandwich, right? Dude, whatever you put your mouth on is the most intimate thing ever, right? There's no middle ground. It's either like, yes, or fuck that. There's no middle, eh, you know, balls, right? <laughs> you just, and you just insert yourself into the situation. Like, when you watch a porno, there's, there's a guy and a, and a girl, but you're not looking at the guy. Even though he's right there, you're just looking at the girl, and you're just thinking, yeah, that's what I would be doing to her, right? <laughs> But if you took the girl out and there was just some guy just sitting there just dry humping, you'd be like, this shit is horrific, right? So when I'm looking at two dudes kissing, it's like a stalemate. There's no place for me to insert myself into that situation that isn't horrific, right? Does that mean I'm fucked up, you know? You know what I love about that joke? You guys got it after, like, the first example, yet I felt the need to give you 58 more examples of this. So, just gotta get my shit together, man. That's basically it. Started going back to therapy again. I just can't, I can't, I just can't do therapy. I try, I start telling my stories. I just start fucking laughing. <laughs> and then the therapist is always looking at me like, you know, and I'm like, come on, man, it's kind of funny, right? Like, no, no, it's really, it's really horrific. So he's trying to get me to bring the walls down. So, you know, I finally, one therapy session, you know, I start getting a little emotional. And then all of a sudden, he goes, he goes, okay, yeah, just breathe. And the second my brain was like, ah, oh, what a douche. And I just immediately just... <laughs> I just hate him, though. Just the wall just came back up again, you know? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm just fighting it. You know, maybe this is who the fuck I am. I like Corvettes, you know? Maybe I should just be this... <laughs> should start making some more money, you know? <laughs> you never think about this shit? I don't know how you guys... How do you stay married? How the fuck... Do you, you do it. I know you take the happy family photo as you're sitting there, you know. 
You never just think of that just someday, you know, just slamming the garage door on your head, putting yourself in a coma for a couple of... <laughs> just all happy? Okay, evidently this is a happy crowd. <laughs> I'm the only one who thinks this shit, all right. I don't know. I like fucked up shit, man. I like when crazy stuff happens. I like stuff for, like in sports. I love watching sports. Like I love all this stuff with like people cheating, like with steroids, you know? I am so pro steroids, it's ridiculous. I, I could give a shit. I could really give a shit, you know? I don't know what Barry Bonds is doing, but whatever he's doing, I hope he keeps doing it. I hope he just comes out as like one big chest muscle with like a bat sticking out. It just keeps cranking him over the fence, you know? Who gives a fuck, dude? People have been cheating since the beginning. Since I was watching baseball in the 70s. Half of them were on coke. You don't think that that helped you see the ball a little better? Be like wired out of your mind, like, dude, I can see every stick. It's a curveball, I'm gonna fucking fight it. 12th inning, you're all fucking amped up. This is the shit, man. No, I love all that stuff. I like when, you know, people fall out of the upper deck, when athletes punch people in the stands. I mean, that's, that's just like what's entertainment for me now, you know? I like that Jimmy the Greek moment that happens in sports, you know? Like once every four or five years, you know that? Like some 50, 55 year old white dude tries to explain why black people are kicking the shit out of white people in practically every major sport, you know? And it always goes down the same way, right? There's always like three white dudes and the one white dude in the middle, he's always like the guy with like the theory. You know, he's always like, you know, it seems these, uh, these African-American athletes, they, uh, they seem to have this, uh, this quick twitch uh, muscle fiber, you know, there's a uh, slow twitch and there's um, this quick twitch and the second the dude says that, like the other two white dudes start like sliding out of frame, like, okay, this guy's getting fired and I'm not gonna be part of this highlight. Nice knowing you, Ned, keep that seat warm, right? And the dude in the middle, he's just like hell bent on getting fired, you know, he's just, he starts like bringing up slavery and evidently they were reading the strongest man with the strongest woman and that quick twitch. <laughs> and literally 20 minutes later, that dude's on TV, he's like fired, right? He's crying, his family stand there, he's got like a box of shit from his desk with like an Emmy sticking out. He's like, I don't know what I said, I was just talking about the quick twitch and the slow twitch and I was, wasn't just trying to make a point. No, I love that. I love seeing people mess up their careers like that. It's just funny to me. Plus, I gotta admit, as a white dude, on some level, I have to believe in that theory because it's like, are white dudes that bad at basketball? I can't even watch the NBA anymore, man. It's like every highlight, the white dude's like that, the black dude has like his nuts in his face. Fucking stop! I'm just sitting at home like, for the love of God, tackle the guy. Jesus Christ, get out of the way. Do you ever get tired of those two nuts flying over your head? You know you're gonna be on Sports Center. Just get out of the way. Dude, I'm telling you, there's gotta be something to that theory. I saw this show one time on Runaway Slaves. It was one of the most amazing programs I've ever seen in my life. Dude, when you ran away as a slave, you just didn't run to the end of the driveway and be like, ah, oh, fuck that job, just start walking down the street. Dude, you had to like run through whole states. There's dogs chasing you, you're hurtling shit, you're swimming. Those were the first fucking triathletes. And there was nobody helping him out. There was no dude on the side of the road like, come on, man, two more states, you're in Ohio. Suck it up, you're looking good, looking good. Yeah, you... Dude, you were on your own. Is it any wonder? 250, 300 years of that shit, and then I'm gonna D you up in gym class? It ain't happening. I come from hundreds of years of alcoholics. I got like half a liver, you know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> you know what's funny to me about that stuff? You can't even like, you know, I obviously know that, that theory is crazy, but it's just like you can't even bring up how well black people do, are doing in sports. Everybody gets all weird about it, which I don't understand because it's like a compliment, you know? Like, feel how weird it is right now. You know, I just brought that shit up. All time. <laughs> I'm saying something good, right? I said, I saw a coach get in trouble for that shit. Like, his team was like 0-6 or something. They just couldn't win, and every week the press was just getting on him more and more and more, right? And the dude, he was just like flustered, and he had like a moment of honesty. They were like, why can't you guys win a game? He's like, oh, you know, I don't know, the offense isn't getting it done, you know, defense, you know, they're too slow, and they just run out. <laughs> tell me, we gotta get some more black guys on this team, but I'm telling you, it's not... And immediately, everybody's like, what, 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 what? Everyone started freaking out, like they had no idea what this dude was talking about. It's like, are you watching Sports Center? Or do you see the Olympics? Like, I love the 100-meter dash, right? There's always, there's always like, like, like nine black dudes and that, that one token white guy in, like, lane eight. 
And I'm just sitting there going, come on, man, one time. Just one time, just, just win the bronze, just do what you gotta do. And the white dude always stays with him till like the first turn, then he like fucking blows out his hand. Those other eight black dudes are like Phew. Where's that white dude the next Olympics? He's like up in the broadcast booth, his career's over. He's, where, he's like a commentator. Yeah, it's gonna be a great race. Still can't feel my fucking toes, but I'm telling you. No, I don't get it. It's like a compliment. We're saying you, you, you're fast. That's a good thing, right? People start all freaking out. Oh, you're acting like that's all we can do. You're saying we can't be scientists. No, we're not. All we're saying is if there was a race through the microscopes, you fuckers would win. <laughs> we're just saying that you're fast. You get there first. Your lap coat would be flapping in the wind. I'd get there like three minutes later, all cramped up. <laughs> What are you looking at, bacteria? No, you go first, you just go first. Jesus Christ, that was a Volvo. The guy ran by a Volvo in street shoes. I've never seen that before in my life. No, I, I get into those arguments all the time. All the time. Friends of mine will be like, well, how come any time a black athlete does something, they say it's an athletic move. Any time a white athlete does it, they say it's an intelligent move. And it's like, well, f fair enough, man. It just, just depends on what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you read a defense, white or black, that's an intelligent move, right? But if you take off from the foul line, jump over nine other dudes and throw the shit down, those other nine guys aren't standing there like, fuck, why didn't I think of that shit? <laughs> Here I am dribbling around, guys. I think that's some superhero shit. Shit, like a cake flapping in the wind with a big S on your chest. I'm telling you, man, that, that's the funny thing about Hitler. Just let me finish. Let, let me work my way. Let me work my way through this idea. No, that's my, my favorite, my favorite sports clip is that Jesse Owens shit. I just love it because their whole angle was fucked up. He made Hitler leave in like the third quarter, right? He's putting down his number one finger, just fucking walking out of the stadium. Jesus Christ. Their whole thing was like, we are going to create a superior race. It's like, dude, I think we accidentally already did that. <laughs> you know, we sent a select group of people to the gym every day for a couple hundred years. That's pay evidence. They're fucking dunking on us every day. <laughs> dude, how quiet was that limo ride home with Hitler? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know he was talking crazy shit when they were on the way there. They were all amped up. They are going to dominate Sieg Heil. Just going off. That whole ride home, they're just sitting there all quiet. You're sitting next to an even angrier than usual Adolf Hitler. <laughs> trying to make some sort of small talk like, eh, it is one nice day, isn't it? You know, it's nice boots. <laughs> Dude, I gotta admit, man, I'm, I'm fascinated with Hitler, man. I am. Just how the fuck that guy ever came in power. Because does he ever look like he's in a good mood in any of those clips? Everyone just, ah, ah, his fucking hair slapping around. <laughs> There was nobody even in the beginning to be like, dude, is it me? This guy was, this guy's a crazy, huh? This guy's kind of a spaz. Total cock block. You can't even have him around women or nothing, you know? <laughs> no, you know what is crazy? People can take over shit. That's what it is. Like, regular people, we, I don't know, you just never say shit. You ever notice that? Like, you can be on a bus, 30 decent people, one crazy dude can take over the whole bus, right? Everybody's just sitting there. Everything's great. Then one crazy, ah, fuck, I just start screaming. And the second that happens, all 30 people are like, oh, God, he's like up against them. Does he got hepatitis? Everybody's freaking out. It's like, why doesn't everybody just pounce on the dude? I think every regular person should just have like a chloroform rag, like right in their front shirt pocket. And the second any crazy shit happens, if you're behind it, it's on you. You just pull it out and you take the guy down. Everybody jumps on him, you tie him up. And you tattoo possibly the next Hitler across his forehead. You keep an eye on him, right? No, but it's so hard. It's just hard to speak up. That's the shit, you know? Like, I was in a Target the other day, right? Not bragging, you know? <laughs> I was. And I'm standing there with a buddy of mine, right? He's a bouncer. He's a bouncer in this really, like, crazy bar, so he knows, like, all these scumbags. And it just so happens that one of them just so happens to come walking through the Target. So my buddy he goes to wave to him, like, hey, man, how's it going? And right in this guy being like, ah, oh, you know, it's going pretty good, he just launches into this tirade about, like, like immigrants right in the middle of Target. He's like, how's it going? Tell you how it's going. It's 
goddamn Mexicans keep coming to this country, taking all the fucking jobs. Immediately, everybody in line like, ooh, Eminem, let's read the back of these for a while. Wow, look at that, glucose, is he still there? I'm not looking, I looked the last time. It's your turn to look, I am not looking, you just look. This guy was going off, nobody did shit, including me, including me. I wasn't looking at the guy, even the people who worked at Target. They just kept ringing stuff up, like, ooh, three socks for a dollar, that's amazing. Think it's gonna rain out, fuck! Dude, it was a classic chloroform moment. This guy, he was, doing, he was doing like a fucking Hitler open mic, you know? He was just going off. He was learning how to put thoughts together, right? How to speak in front of groups. Somebody should just came up, you know, threw some Skittles on the ground, you take them out, that's it. It's over. But nobody did shit. You knew there was like one guy working at Target, like some crazy dude peeking out from the back. Like, I like this guy. This guy's making a lot of sense, right? And he follows them out to the parking lot. They jump in his El Camino. Now there's two of them, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, in, I'm into uh, conspiracy theory, man. That's my thing. You guys into that shit? You read that stuff? I do. I think fast food. Fast food, I think, is like a conspiracy. You know? I think that's how they just keep us dumb. You can't even think after a while. You ever notice that shit? Like, you ever have your whole day planned out, eat one Egg McMuffin, and you're just on the couch? Yeah, you know what? Fuck my dreams. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna here for a while. Gonna stretch out, have a good time. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. Healthy food, you can't, you can't even smell it. You have a bag of apples right in front of my face. I, I, my eyes are closed, I can't smell it. 200 miles away, oh, fuck, is that, is that KFC? Hey, you wanna get some chicken? Go there and you get a bucket of it. I'm telling you, you never notice that? You ever notice whenever the government fucks up, all of a sudden, like, McDonald's has, like, a new sandwich? You know? You're just sitting there screaming at your TV. How can I get pardon all these CEOs? New McRib, oh, I'm gonna fucking try that. <laughs> Shove it down your face. So anyways, yeah, so I have a lot of, like, uh, I have a lot of fucked up thoughts, man. I do. This is the most recent one I had. You ever drive down the street and see like 30 people up on a sidewalk and you just think <laughs> Right? You don't do it, you just think it. That's what like separates the psychos from the functioning psychos, right? Psychos, they just think it, fuck it, they do it. They get the wipers going, they make a day out of it, right? But as a functioning psycho, not only do you not do it, you actually analyze it. Like, man, if I just leave my hand right here, nobody knows who I am. I move it two degrees over here, I'm on the cover of Newsweek. I am instantly famous, right? Right here, nobody knows me. Just a regular jackass, like, hey, Bill, you wanna come to the cookout, you know? Maybe you could bring that, that potato salad. It was such a big hit last year. One of the most horrific scenes we've seen in years. Bodies just screwed about. You should really go there. Amy's gonna be there. You can strike up a conversation, maybe hook up with her. No indication he even tried to stop. <laughs> no, I have those thoughts all the time. Like recently, my girl took me to a uh, street fair, right? You guys ever been to a street fair, you know? They close off the block, right? They close off the block, there's like shawarma, there's like shit made out of buttons, right? People with no teeth are making keychains, you know? It's a typical girlfriend idea. It sucks, and it's gonna take all Saturday, right? Right? She's like all excited. She's like swinging my arm. Oh my God, this is gonna be fucking great, right? I'm like praying for lightning, some sort of scaffolding to fall down on my head, you know? So she comes up, first place she comes up to is this big table, nothing but like homemade jewelry, right? Homemade jewelry, okay? It's got twigs in it, macaroni, it's shit. It is a table of shit, right? But she loves it, right? She's like, oh my God, this stuff is so funky, right? She's like trying on the earrings. Do you like these? Do you think these are nice, right? I want to be like, no. If they were nice, they'd be in a store, all right? There'd be a roof, some sort of structure would be built around this. This is shit. This is a table of shit, right? Oh, brutal. It's brutal, right? But, but I don't want to be a dick, so I'm like, no, honey, that's great. You know, you know what, I'm gonna go get some air, okay? Even though we're outside, I think there's more air to be had, you know? No, because I felt it, I was gonna snap. I literally walked like two, three tables away, and there's this lady standing there with this big table and nothing but muffins, right? 
homemade muffins. It's like 85 degrees out. She's standing there with this big table, nothing but muffins. She's got this big stupid, eh, look at the muffins I made. Look in her face. And the second I saw that shit, that part of my brain was just like, dude, what would happen if you just came up and just said, hey, lady, are these your muffins? Oh, yeah? And just started going fucking, bam, 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 bam. Like, how many of these muffins could I mush before anybody did anything? I mean, realistically, I think I could have got the whole table. Because even if you saw me doing that shit, it would take at least five to six seconds to process. Like, did they say you could do that? Is it, is it like a game? Do you eat the muffin off your fist? That just seems like a waste of pastry. You know? Dude, there's no security and shit like that. There's no dude standing there. He's mushing the muffins. Okay, help, I'm on it. Sir, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. They just choked me out. So I just started thinking of the horrified, fucked up look in this lady's face as I started slamming these muffins. And out of nowhere, I just started laughing like a maniac. I'm like slumped over this fried dough card. I'm dying. My girl looks at me. She's like, what the hell are you laughing at? And like an idiot, I actually tried to explain this fucked up thought to her. Like she was gonna get it on some level, right? I'm just sitting there like, I was just thinking, what if I started punching the muffins? You know what I mean? I just started punching them. And she's just looking at me like, why do I go out with you? Dude, but I swear to God, man, if I never broke eye contact the second I started hitting those things, that girl wouldn't even be able to call for help. I would have been in her head. It would have been too personal. She'd be like, did I go to high school with this guy? Why would you do that? Muffins are a happy food. I don't understand it. All right, listen, I'm out of time. You guys are so much fun. Thank you so much for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.